Hi, I'm Nicholas Lodge and I'm excited to share with you my new Nicholas Lodge collection by Katie Sue Designs. In this presentation, I will be showing you how to use one of the winter collection, the pine cone. During this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the pine cone mold from the Nicholas Lodge collection by Katie Sue Designs. So this innovative mold has got three cavities, a large, a medium and a small and is made to be used in either half relief pine cones or dimensional pine cones, which I will be showing you both. You'll notice here that there is actually a little recess to accommodate either a wire, a toothpick, or a piece of spaghetti when making dimensional pine cones. Generally for a pine cone mold like this, I would either use modified rolled fondant or sugar paste to make the pine cones. This means to modify the paste, we add tylose or CMC or tylo powder to the sugar paste or rolled fondant to firm it up a little bit. So we have 115 grams and 115 grams is actually here is actually if we do that in ounces, if you work in pounds and ounces is actually just over four ounces. So either a quarter of a pound, four ounces or 115 grams. To that, I'm going to add some tylose powder. So tylo or tylose powder is a CMC, carboxymethylcellulose, and this is used as an additive to a lot of different pastes we use in sugar craft. And so using this product, we're going to take, um, flatten this out, and I'm going to add one quarter teaspoon of the uh, tylose powder to here. So just tap that level, so I have a quarter teaspoon. And then I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of a vegetable shortening of fat. So this is a vegetable fat here. So I'm just going to use a quarter of a teaspoon of this as well. And I will add this to the tylose or CMC. Now brands of tylose and CMC do vary a little bit by manufacturer to manufacturer. And so if you do find your paste is a little firm the first time you do this, maybe cut back a little bit on the amount of tylose or even up the amount of the sugar paste or fondant. But the um, paste and the um, Tylos brand I use, this is a perfect formula, 115 grams, one quarter teaspoon of Tylos or CMC, and one quarter teaspoon of vegetable shortening or fat. You must use a vegetable fat, not an animal fat, because of storage of this paste. Once this is being combined together, this is a very easy process. We want to pop this into a little zip top type of bag. And I would generally just mark that modified fondant or modified sugar paste. So we know this has been pre-modified. And then we need to leave this for about 10 or 15 minutes before we move on to the next step. Preparing the mold can be done in two ways. In a traditional uh, method that Katie Sue uses, that is we take some corn flour or corn starch, just using a brush, just gonna brush just a little bit of that into the mold. And then you're just gonna just tap out the excess uh, cornstarch or corn flour. So that is one way. Um, in teaching, I typically use a little cornstarch or corn flour pouch uh, when I'm doing sugar flour making. So this is the technique I use. This is just a small uh, little knee high, which is a short like pantyhose or tight. And this has a uh, corn flour cornstarch in it. And then is, um, has a little band on the top of it. So this is when I use the mold, I actually am going to just actually roll my ball or my sausage of paste onto the little cornstarch or corn flour pouch. So both methods work exactly the same way, just obviously a different application. Once we have uh, got your mold prepared, uh, we're then going to move on to the next step. Now, these molds have, uh, when we uh, did the molds, I've actually scaled out my paste so I know how many grams will fill each mold. So if you're using scaled weight, the small will take two grams of paste, the medium will take five grams of paste, and the large will take seven grams of paste. Um, if you're using the size guide, um, some of you may have taken some of my classes, my online classes, like with Craftsy. So if you're familiar with the size guide, the large will use a number 11 size ball of paste, and then the medium will use a number 10 small, that means the number 10 goes through the hole, and then the small we use a number eight small that goes through the hole. So just to explain how that would work, um, if you were making then a large pine cone, 
you can take a scale. Now this is a uh, small digital scale, but this actually is a high precision scale. So this will scale like a 1.1 gram, 1.2 gram, or 7 eighths of a gram. So I use this a lot for being sometimes more technical. Uh, what we're doing here with the pine cone, you'll just need a regular scale will be perfectly okay. But I'm going to put this onto the scale so you can see this is 7 grams of paste. So if you were making, say, three pine cones, you could just scale off 21 grams, make it into a sausage, and then just cut it into three sections. Or obviously you could scale each one individually. If you're scaling multiple balls of paste, you just want to keep those underneath a little pot like this. This will just stop the paste drying. If you are using the size guide method, this would sit onto the number 11 hole like this. So as you can see in the size guide, there is about one third below the hole. All right, so it's about one third below the hole and about two thirds above the top of the hole. Okay, so this is how we would use the size guide. So this would be a number 11 size. And then with the medium size, that would be five grams or that would be a number 10 small. So that means that just goes through the number 10 hole on the size guide. So that would just go th just through the hole of the number 10. So that is what we call a small, a small size here. That goes through the number 10 hole. And then the small one would be a number, this is two grams of paste, or this would be a number eight small. So you can see how that actually just fits through, through the number eight small hole like that. Okay. And these measurements are going to be on, uh, shown on the DVD at the end of the DVD. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a medium sized pine cone. So I'm going to use the medium sized cone here. So first of all, I would just condition my paste a little bit. Um, usually when I condition the paste, I would just take a small amount of vegetable shortening or fat and just work that into the paste. This is just going to make the paste a little bit more sort of elasticy. And then I'm going to just roll this into, into a sausage shape like this. And then once I've rolled this into a sausage shape, I'm just going to roll this on the top of my little bag here. All right, so remember this is an alternative to put in the corn flour cornstarch into the mold. I'm going to press this into the mold like this. And when I do this, I'm going to actually use a cosmetic sponge. So a cosmetic sponge is what I use for most of the time when I'm working with molds because this will make the paste go into the mold level. And you see how you're just going to then flatten this off with the mold. But this is also good as an alternative to pushing the paste into the detail. So you see how this is actually going to go into the mold, so this will be flat and level with the top of the mold. So if we were making just half relief pine cones like this, you just would flex the mold and we would just take the pine cone out like this and this will give you your pine cone. So you can see here you've got a beautiful pine cone ready to be used on a decoration for a cake, on a wreath, on a cupcake or different other applications. Um, I'm going to show you how to make, um, obviously, a double-sided pine cone, a relief pine cone. Um, so what we would do there is I'm just going to actually then just pop this back into the mold. So of course you would just would keep your paste in the mold like this, just press this in. And then once you have got this into the mold, we're going to actually make a floral tape bud. Now a floral tape bud is what we're going to um, insert into the middle of the pine cone. Now when you're making the small pine cone, I would do this with a 22 gauge wire. For the medium and the large pine cone, I would use a 20 gauge wire. So here I'm going to take a 20 gauge wire. Uh, this is a 20 gauge green wire. And I'm going to take my 20 gauge green wire. I'm going to take some brown floral tape. This is actually half width tape, so I've just cut this with a pair of scissors or using a tape cutter. So I've cut my tape to half width. And then what I'm going to do here is just going to take my floral tape going to take the end of the tape, just stretch that slightly to open up the pores of the tape. And on the 20 gauge wire, this could be a white or green wire, it doesn't matter. We're going to go around the end of the wire just once to get started. And then use a little bit of corn flour or corn starch on your fingers. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. So what that's going to do is going to make what we call like a little floral tape bud. You then take a pair of pliers and with a pair of pliers, we're now going to fold over the top of this. So you're actually going to make a little hook on the end of this. So this little hook like this is on the end. So you see how you actually get this little hook on the end there. And then on top of that, we're going to go around 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then going to come down the wire like this. So this is what we call a floral tape bud. And so remember, we're going to use 20 gauge wire for this, so five times hook and then 10 times. 
So uh, we're going to use a 20 gauge wire for the medium and large pine cone. And then for the small pine cone, I would use a 22 gauge wire, but still exactly the same number of times. Because you need a stronger wire for a bigger, obviously, project, just like in flower making. So now we're going to take um, this uh, floral tape bud, and we can use uh, several different options here. We could use egg white, so we could take some fresh egg whites. Uh, so here I have some fresh egg white, so we could put a little bit of fresh egg white. We could just brush this onto the floral tape bud. We could also use some piping gel, so we could take a little bit of piping gel. We could use edible glue, and then we can also use Super Bond, which is a sort of a thick glue product that we can use also as an alternative. So really, it's whatever you have um, at home when you're doing this. Um, I'm going to show you here with some egg white. So with some egg white, I'm going to brush a little bit of egg white onto my floral tape bud. And then I'm going to take this, and you see there's this little recess here. So this recess is to accommodate the wire. Now you can also make uh, these on uh, uh, pine cones on spaghetti. So if you wanted to make a dimensional pine cone, for example, to sit into a bouche de Noël, a Yule log, or you wanted to sit on top of a cupcake and you wanted a completely three-dimensional pine cone, I would use spaghetti. This is a totally edible uh, support system and you just would again put a little bit of egg white or the glue or piping gel onto the spaghetti so that that would stick into there. And then you can also make for example, pine cones on toothpicks as well. So again, I generally use these carved ended type of toothpicks. So you just would brush a little bit of egg white onto there or piping gel or glue, and then press that into there to accommodate the center. But if you're planning on doing wired pine cones, so we're gonna take this now, just gonna press this into about into the middle here. I'm gonna use my finger here because if we use a cosmetic sponge, you'll end up um, obviously getting the, uh, the glue onto that. So just gonna press this in. And then we're just going to flex the mold. So you're just going to flex the mold like this. So you see your pine cone will then come out. So you see how this, like so. Now this needs to dry um, until it really is as hard as possible. Because this is modified fondant, it's not going to dry as quickly as if this was made with gum paste or flour modeling paste. Uh, I use a food dehydrator a lot for doing cookies and lots of decorations like this. I live in Atlanta, which is a humid environment, so generally I put things in a food dehydrator for three to four hours. Um, if you don't have a food dehydrator, or especially if it's raining or a little humid, uh, probably leave this for about six to eight hours if possible. Because when we do the second half of this, we're actually going to push onto this uh, piece, which needs to be dry. If not, you're going to squash it. So we're actually doing this in a two-step process. This is going to eliminate the problem of a seam because if you make a pine cone and you actually make the two halves of the pine cone and you stick them together while they're soft, the issue there is going to be you're going to squash and distort the de definition on the pine cone. If we made the two halves of the pine cone then put them together once they're dry, we're not going to be able to eliminate a seam where the two pieces meet. Um, and then, so this is the way I came up with making perfect pieces. This technique will also be shown on some of my other videos showing things like the blackberry and also the acorn. So once this part is dry, uh, we can then move on to the next part. So this is actually a dry one. So you can see this one was actually made um, actually earlier today. So this is dry and we now can go on to the next step. So once that first half is dry, you're going to just repeat the process. So I'm now going to take another piece of paste. Again, I'm just going to just work a little bit of my, uh, so this is what I refer to in my classes as conditioning the paste, all right? When you, when you take a little bit of uh, uh, vegetable shortening and you're just gonna work this into the paste, like when we do flour making, we condition the gum paste or the flour paste. It makes a huge difference. So you're just gonna, so you see how you're gonna make your smooth sausage. And again, I'm just going to just roll that onto my little baggie here, my little cornstarch pouch. And you're going to just press this into the mold. And again, this is now going to be the second half that will go into the mold. Okay, so this will again, you can see, fill the mold up to the top perfectly. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to brush some egg white, some edible glue, some uh, piping gel or some super bond. So any of these products could be used. You know, this is the piping gel, this is the super bond here. Um, so either of these products, something that's basically sticky, all right? Uh, water really wouldn't be suitable here, so it's going to just generally brush over. But if you were using piping gel, you could just put a little bit of piping gel onto there. This is sticky, um, edible glue or egg white. So whatever you have 
that hand will work. But this is going to make the surface sticky. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, second part of the pine cone. So this is the dry half, this is the soft half. So now we're just going to position that on the top. And I'm just going to just press gently um, to initially, and then you can press nice and firmly. So what's going to happen is now the two halves are going to integrate into each other, with the soft half is going to then fill in any, obviously, unevenness on the dry part. And then when you flex this, this will come out of the mold here, like this. You can see that pretty much you're going to get a pine cone, which is going to have a lovely um, a join to it, all right? So you're not going to have that issue you would have uh, with a seam. And this is how we would make the dimensional pine cones. Now then you just can put this into a styrofoam block or into a cake dummy and then let this dry. And then we would then move on to the next stage of coloring this and finishing it off. So when making the half relief pine cones to use for cupcakes, Bush de Noel, the Yule log or other applications, especially more like pastry things and uh, decorative things for things you're going to eat, um, in addition to using modified sugar paste or rolled fondant, which is what I've used for the wired pine cone, you can also use modeling chocolate. So this pine cone here and this pine cone here was made with milk modeling chocolate. And uh, that is available commercially, or you can make your own modeling chocolate. It's melted chocolate and glucose. And then this one was actually done with uh, melted chocolate. So what I actually did there, uh, this one was done with milk chocolate, where I just actually just melted some chocolate in the microwave. I then filled the mold up level to the top with a piping bag. I put this in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes, popped the pine cone out. This one I've gone on the top with some edible gold um, with a brush uh, just to sort of embellish the edge of this. So this would obviously make this taste very nice. So if you're going to use this for something you're going to eat, you could use modeling chocolate or also melted chocolate as well in the pine cone mold. And if you wanted to make two halves, you could do these in exactly the same way. With melted chocolate, if you're making a dimensional pine cone, you'd make the two halves of the pine cone and then you would then use melted chocolate or a warm cookie sheet to just uh, melt one half and then put the two pieces together. But the modeling chocolate will dry firm enough that you could do this in the same way as I've shown you doing the uh, wired pine cone. And if you wanted to make a dimensional pine cone but without a wire, then again you just do one half, let it dry and then repeat this with the second half. Now once we have the pine cones made, we're going to move on to the next part of that, which is going to be to color them. Um, so here when you are doing the coloring, I will show you a small dimensional one and also a large half one. I'm going to use some super pearl. Um, this is uh, some pearl dust. I have this in a pump style brush. And uh, what I'm going to do here is with the pump brush, I'm just going to just gently brush from the outside of the pine cone, from the top down to the bottom. So what this is going to do is going to give you almost a sort of a pearlescent look, a little bit sort of a shade into your pine cone. This will also be done on the large pine cone here. So I'm just going to just brush down from the top coming down to the bottom. So this just gives a nice sort of shade in. And then I like to put a little bit of gray onto my pine cones. So this is some um, gray dust. This is like a dove gray, like a silver gray color. Again, if you don't have gray, you could take some uh, black and then add a little bit of uh, corn flour or cornstarch to that just to make a lighter, a very light black, which would be if you like this gray. And again, with a flat brush, I'm going to just gently brush from the top coming down. So you get this sort of this nice contrast to the fairly dark brown that's underneath. So you see how you're going to get this sort of beautiful color to your pine cone. And again, on this one here, I'm just going to just brush this down. You see this gives a really, really nice natural color. So though we started off with a fairly dark sort of chocolate brown color, but then by the time you get this dust in on it, you're going to get this really nice sort of shading, which makes it look very, very natural. Once we have got the pine cone completed, um, then you can of course use these in different applications like on a wreath, you could do piped uh, greenery, you could use this obviously with uh, other uh, parts and components from the mold. When you're making wired pine cones, so for example here um, I have a spray of pine, so this is actually shows you the three pine cones, the large, the medium and the small, uh, used on a branch and I have some pine needles and I'm going to show you how I make this and this makes a very realistic looking branch if you're going to use this for example on a wedding cake or an anniversary cake or a groom's cake. 
When we make the pine needles, we're going to start off with some half width green floral tape. So just like the brown, we're going to cut this with a tape cutter or a pair of scissors. So you take, a, uh, take some piece of this off and you're going to need about a yard or a meter of uh, tape each time you do this. You're going to use just a little bit of corn um, starch on your fingers and then what you'll do is you'll actually start at the end of the, the start of the end of the tape like this. You're just going to just twist this and you're just going to just twist and you sort of twist and pull as you come down. So what you're doing is you're creating just this twisted floral tape uh, piece. I've already done most of this. I should just show you how we finish this off. So just going to continue down here. So you see how you're just going to just, but you want to keep some tension on this because the floral tape is sticky when it uh, actually sticks to itself. So you just have to make sure that you twist this as you go and this will give you your floral tape, twisted floral tape. So once you get your floral tape twisted, you then just sort of cut this to desired size. And then we're going to take your fingers. So taking your fingers, you're going to take uh, two or three fingers. If you're going to do small pine cones, I would use generally two fingers. If you're going to do larger pine cones, I would use three fingers. But we're going to take your two or three fingers and you're going to just wrap the, the twisted floral tape around your fingers like this. You see how I'm just going to wrap around like this. So this will create this almost like a piece of rope. We then are going to take a 26 gauge wire. I'm using here green wire, but also you could use white wire because you're not going to actually see this. And you're going to put the wire through the piece of uh, twisted tape. And then you're just going to just twist that a couple of times with your fingers. So you see how you've sort of connected this all together, squash it. And then we're going to go back with a little bit of brown floral tape. So now we're going to just take a little bit of my brown floral tape here. And I'm going to just tape over the end of this. So where this all meets, you're going to actually just take this. It's going to just tape down with your floral tape like so. Next step is just to pull this all together. And you're just going to trim this to the desired length. So you're just going to just trim this across. So you see as when you take this and then when you open these out, these are going to give you very realistic looking pine needles. So this is how that we make the pine needles here uh, for the branch. So when finishing this off, uh, you would take the pine needles and you could put you know, one or two pine cones together. I'm just going to add the needles to the pine cone grouping. Taking some brown floral tape, I would just simply tape this together. So you see it's going to make a nice natural spray here. And then you can take these little small groupings and then you can tape these onto a longer wire. So I actually used a, a 20 gauge wire here and I sort of put a small group in, a single cone with some pieces and I've added just some uh, pine branches, then the medium and some pine needles, and then the large and some pine needles coming down the wire. And then when you uh, finish this off, you can actually texture this to give it like a sort of an effect, almost like a sort of pine bark. And so you actually use your uh, scissors here and you're actually going to texture the floral tape. I use this technique on a lot of my classes for things like cherry blossom and uh, dogwood and uh, acorn leaves as well, acorn branches, so just texture this. Now, if you wanted to make this uh, have this sort of icy look on the tips of these, that's very easy to achieve. And that is done by taking a little um, confectioner's glaze. So confectioner's glaze is a food grade shellac. Um, if you don't have confectioner's glaze, you could use some edible glue or some piping gel. So just like with sticking the pine cone together, they're alternatives. But I'm using here some, some confectioner's glaze. And I'm going to just brush this onto uh, the tips of the pine needles. So generally I just do a sort of a few of these at a time. So it's going to brush a little bit of the glaze onto those. And then I will just take a little dish and with a small dish here, I'm going to just uh, sprinkle now some, this is actually sanding sugar. This is used for cookie decorating, but you can also use just regular uh, table sugar as well. And you're just going to just sprinkle the sugar over the, and where the glaze has actually been put or the piping gel has been put or the edible glue has been put. You see how you're going to get this very uh, nice uh, sort of sparkly, uh, wintry, frosty look to your uh, pine needles. And uh, so this really makes a, a nice uh, 
obviously look to this. And then of course you can just uh, put this and then this can go back into the container. So that is how we would uh, finish off the uh, little branches. So whether making just simple half relief pine cones, like I've shown, making pine cones on toothpicks, on uh, spaghetti or on wires to make dimensional pine cones, or putting them into a beautiful spray um, for a seasonally appropriate arrangement, shows you the diversity of this mold. So I will hope you will enjoy using this mold and have fun creating the pine cones and using them in different ways on your cakes and confections. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and will have lots of fun with your new molds. So until next time, thanks for watching. Sweet wishes, this has been Nicholas Lodge. <laughs>